invented the wheel, our very lives have depended upon wheels, travel, and transportation. Early Americans, hardy pioneers, men and women of courage and ambition broke the untamed plains to the rumble of wheels, carving the ruts of the great trail deeper into the prairie side of Kansas, over desert and mountain ranges, fording swollen rivers, fighting rainstorms and blinding blizzards. Wheels carried their families and all their earthly possessions westward, ever westward. Wheels were the lifeline of the West, and always there was the law of the frontier. The man who holds the roads and mountain passes rules an empire. How you doing, lad? How are you, Mac? Well, Mac. How is the sheep business? 20,000 I'll be sharing this year. Mm, that's very good. For something that smells so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that bad. <laughs> okay, get back, fellas. Let the mail through. That's it. You boys better wait out here till we get this untangled. Wait, wait. Always we have to wait. But Missy Amari must be the first one to get his mail. That's why. Why not? See and Jeff the Mart opened the first wagon trail through this territory. He built this tunnel. And he got plenty rich, but that don't say he owned the whole country. Patience, friend Naval. Jeff is an old man, and he's done a great deal for us. Fourteen letters, five postal cards, and a seed catalog. Either more people ought to write to us, or we ought to quit hauling the mail. <laughs> You're sad, a kind of bitter, Tony? Well, yes, no, Mr. Marr. My leg's better, but at my last stop, my shoulder was so bad off, I declare I could hardly lift a glass of beer. Oh, it's too bad. On your way out, take that keg of nails over to the warehouse, will you? Sure. He's coming home, Gideon. Then he? Arrives in Pawnee the 9th of May. That's less than a month. We have a wagon train leaving for Kansas the 1st of May. I suppose you want to go along to fetch my girl home, eh? I'll be there when the train pulls in. If that tootling teapot ever gets there. Morning. Morning. May I inquire if there's any mail for me? The name's Bent. So you're Stephen Bent. That's right. I'm expecting some. Yeah, I've heard the name, but never anything good connected with it. Is your mail, Mr. Bent? Oh, thank you. Sort of off your range, aren't you? Well, for the time being, yes. I'm with the Missouri Central Railroad. I expect to see a lot more of you gentlemen in the future. <laughs> well, thanks again for the mail. Just a minute, Bent. Yes? About seeing more of us. Don't go out of your way. The town's pretty crowded. Well, you don't seem very hospitable, Mr. Marr. I didn't intend to. And you might pass the word along to your company when you get back. Well, I came here to get my mail, Mr. Marr, not to argue. 
But as long as you've brought up the subject, I'd like to answer you. Nobody asked you to. Well, nevertheless, it might prevent trouble. And the railroad doesn't want to have any trouble with you or any other freight hauling outfit. Will the railway come as far, Mr. Bent? Well, we hope to go through as far as Santa Fe. Then we'll meet up with the Pacific Short Line. Then we'll have a market west as well as east. Why don't you tell him the rest of it? Who'll pay for the engine, the cars, the rails? And the people will. And land which will be condemned and taken from you. And taxes which will keep you and your children poor. And in sheep and cattle, these trains will kill on your unfenced land. It's 50 years too soon for a railroad through this territory. Why, the railroad's an octopus. And men like Bent, who build it, are parasites that'll live off your blood and sweat. What do you think we ought to do, Monsieur Ma? Stop them now while you've got the chance. Don't let them cross the Kansas line. Well, what do you say to that, Mr. Bent? Just that I'm surprised that an intelligent man should make such a statement. Since Mr. Marr is in the freighting business, naturally his opinion of his competitors is bound to be biased. Sure, you'll have to give up some of your land for the railroad right away. And your taxes will be higher. But that's because the value of your property will be multiplied a dozen times. If our trains destroy your stock, we'll gladly pay damages. But, and this is the important thing, our stock cars will take your sheep and cattle fat and prime to the market. And what's more, I promise the railroad will pay back to you in profits twice what it takes away. I think he's right, Lanny. Oui, oui. You fool. I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Mr. Marr. Get out. Well, this doesn't belong to me. I'm sorry, Skeen. How do you know my name? Well, your reputation as a man who gets things done has traveled far. How'd you like to work for me? Get out. Lottie, which money you need, there's somebody's got a wee bit we'd like to invest. Well, fine, thanks. <laughs> Maybe sometime we come talk with you, eh, Mr. Bent? Yes, come on, we'll, uh, we'll talk it over. Well, goodbye, boys. Ah, thank you. Goodbye. Get in. If he sets foot on my land, I want him off it. Or under it. Yes, sir. Can't never tell. Take it again, sir. Right. You know, I figure it'll trip a hundred miles off the route. Hmm, 120 to be exact. Which explains how Jeff the Mark can keep all the freighting business in the southwest tied up. You sure we can get through? Well, we'll have to blow off those big ledges. Even then, we'll need double header locomotives to haul the grave. How much will it cost? Oh, around 9,000 a mile. Can we do it for that? Uh-huh. Strike the equipment, we'll go back to camp. All right.
come any closer, Mr. Bent. What are you waiting for, Skeen? You saw the sign back there, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You smashed the lock, didn't you? I did. And you knew you were trespassing. Well, I have a privilege of survey in the land commissioner's office. That's no good here. This cutoff belongs to Jephthah Ma. He built this road, and for 30 years, he fought Indians, bandits, and outlaws to hold it. Well, I don't deny that he deserves a lot of credit for opening the territory, but... Those who tried to take it from him are buried on both sides of the trail, Mr. Bent. I appreciate that, too, but... Then take your men and get out. You know, Skeen, as times change, so do people and their needs, even their laws. As the country moves westward, distances become greater. Yesterday, it was wagons. Today, it's rails. Who knows what it may be tomorrow? We won't worry about tomorrow. Take your men and get out. And if I don't? Tiny. Howdy, Mr. Bend. Nice day, ain't it? Hey, be careful of that. It's the only one this side of the street. Get our horses. Does that settle your business here? For now, yes. You're too intelligent a man to think you can stop the railroad. You'll never get over these mountains. Mountains won't stop us, Gideon. Jep Thamar will. Don't try it again. Next time we'll bring rails. That'll be your monument. Most men leave less. Goodbye, Mr. Bent. Goodbye, Gideon. You've done a good job. And I don't mind admitting that you've hurt me plenty. My fight's against time. In spite of all you've done, I wish I had you with me instead of against me. Excitement like this is mighty bad for my weak heart. The only transit this side of St. Louis. Looks like Skeen is right. I guess old Jeff has stopped us. That doesn't sound like you, Steve. You're generally pretty good at picking up the pieces. There's only some way of getting under that old firebrand's hide. What in the world would a man like Jeff the Mar love more than power and glory? Of course. Of course, what? That letter. What letter? Never mind. <laughs> I'll see you all in Pawnee on the 9th of May. <laughs> Like I have, you wouldn't have. I'll buy you a cushion when we get into Pawnee. 
Take it up. Oh, uh, now keep your pictures on, kid. We'll pull into Pawnee and find to paint the town red, lick all the Texans forward through. Remember what happened the last time you tangled with Texans? Was them Texans? <laughs> I thought them was wildcats. <laughs> Say, say, kid, I supposing Miss Biddy comes back with a lot of fancy St. Louis manners. Don't worry, she won't. I don't know. St. Louis is a mighty fancy place. I wrote there once to medicine company for a bottle of liver pills. Guess what they sent me? I haven't any idea. <laughs> there are ladies' daughters and an invitation to join the elf. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell about St. Louis. Get a gate on those horses. Don't run a temperature. Get them steam cars is always late. I give them goddess to a gal with red hair called Chilly Lily on the count of a... Right enough. Get them lined out. Fella in love is always in the ladder. Come on, with you. Make your leaders pull with your wheelers. Keep them moving. Come. Hey, there's a friend of yours over there, Tiny. You better pull in your neck. Huh. I thought I put him in the hospital permanent. Didn't I warn you to keep them wagons out of Pawnee? Brannigan, you give me a pain right square in my sciatic. What up, you pair of Missouri mules? Oh, so you like that hospital, did you? Yeah, but this time it's gonna be different. I'm gonna bite your ears off right down to your pocket. Oh, yeah. Take it easy, Tiny. Take it easy. Maybe a strike. for the railroad, Brannigan? No. I'm speaking for myself and the boys. We ain't been paid for weeks, so the railroad gets no more freight until we get our money. Who represents the railroad around here? Where'll I find him? Fella by the name of Bent. <laughs> but he ain't shown up in more than a month. Bent? Your fight's with him, not with me. I'm unloading. Oh, no, you ain't. What do you say, boys? Oh, oh. Let him on you. Move them wagons out of here, leather back, or we'll move them for you. Better take it slow, Brannigan. Unload them. One side buckle. Oh! Hold it. Here we are. I'm paying a dollar apiece to help unload my wagons or else get out. What do you say? What'll it be? All right. All right. Let's get it done. All right. Snap to it. And the same goes for you.
You're a stupid, thick-headed bungler, Brannigan. I was doing the best I could, Clanton. Let a sagebrush mule push you, knock out the few brains you have, and then steal your men. Pull the gun on me. I've heard that's quite an old custom in the West. But, champ, I didn't have a chance. I pay you to wreck the railroad, and what do you do? You let a load of freight slip into the warehouse. That helps Bent, not me. Maybe it won't do him no good. He ain't showed up in more than a month. Where is he? Finished, I hope. Anyway, the banks in Topeka won't lend him another cent. I've taken care of that. If he does show up, the orders still stand? The orders stand until I say they change. And the next time you make a mistake, Brannigan, you're through. Tell me how glad he was to meet you and how much he admires you. Hello, Gideon. How do you do? Mr. Bed's been so nice. He even made him get the train here sharp on time just for me. Didn't you, Stephen? Well, I'll I'll get your trunks. Oh, no. Stephen had not set of the Pawnee out. Well, I'll get your carriage. Oh, let's walk. It'll feel good to stretch my... Uh -huh, to get some exercise. <laughs> Come on, Stephen. Come on, Gideon. Gideon's just like one of the family. He taught me how to ride. Remember that half local Palomino of that pitched me off my head? Uh-huh. You thought I was dead, I guess. He kissed me. Then he got mad and made me get back on that horse and stick there. Well, I imagine Gideon has a habit of sticking to anything once he starts it. What's the matter, Gid? You haven't said a word. Why, oh, Champ Clanton, of all people. What brings you to poor me? You. Me? Well, thanks for the compliment. I've heard it said that you're afraid to come back. Well, in that case, you can run and tell your friends that I'm here. We all like to appear brave in front of ladies. Just a minute, Bent. Excuse me. Maybe you won't like to welcome the boys to have plans for you. Oh, I'll take my chance. You don't fool me, Bent. I know the fix you're in. I know all about those notes in the Bank of Kansas. But I'm willing to help you out. Well, it's mighty considerate of you. I got a proposition to make to you about the Missouri Central. Well, that's what I thought. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. Now, wait a minute. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take the road off your hands, and I'll see that you make a reasonable sort of profit. She's not for sale. All right. Don't say I haven't warned you. Boys, look who's here. Get Benny out of here. What's the matter, sir? Well, you better go get him. I know, but what? Please, please. How are you, Brannigan? Don't give me none of your taffy. The men want to know when they get their wages. I'll start paying off tomorrow. You're paying them in full? That doesn't concern you. It concerns us. Yeah, right. yeah. Now, wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. If you listen to me, there's a solid year's work ahead for all of you. I got more in Topeka at higher wages than you can afford to pay. They don't want work. They want their money. They'll never get it as long as you and Clanton are here to Shanghai them and leave me short-handed. He hasn't got the money. He can't pay you. Why not? That's what I heard. You've always been paid, haven't you? Sure, but always late. I may have been late, but you've always been paid. You ain't kidding these men anymore. They're not dumb. They can see while they're going hungry. You're spending their money on fancy clothes and women. This is no place for you. You better go on up to the hotel. Oh, I've seen men fight before. Seven against one.
like the yard. I'd rather have you with me than against me. <laughs> oh, that was the best fight I'd ever seen. Are you all right? What are you doing on here, Tiny? Oh, just having yourself a little fun. I believe you have a reservation for me, Rita Molyneux. Oh, Miss Molyneux, yes. Uh, would you just register, please? Rita! Stephen, you rascal. I'm glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you wouldn't get here. Uh-oh. Don't tell me you ran into another door. Small one. <laughs> Why didn't you wait for me in Topeka? Well, they were gunning for me again. And if I hadn't been able to meet the payroll this time... Excuse me. I'll show you to your room. Thank you. Well, Steve, tell me, what happened? Well, I... The whole thing... It's been so mixed up. I didn't hear this. Come in. Sit down, Gideon. Take it easy, and this will be a nice, friendly visit. I would never have guessed it yesterday. Then we're even. I certainly never expected to see you with Stephen Bent. People are already saying you've turned railroader. Talk's cheap. And dangerous. That's why I'm here to warn you. Don't forget your Jeff the Mars man, Gideon. And he's a freighter. I don't think that concerns you, and I don't think that's why you're here. Now, wait a minute. Whether you believe it or not, I'm your friend. And I'm making you listen because it's the only way to get some sense into your head. Bent will use you to get in with Jeff the Maw. And if he does, he'll cut into your territory, take away your freighting business, and ruin every friend you have. Do you want to help him? You'd rather I helped you. I know your outfit. All you want is Bent busted higher than a kite. You've got me wrong, Gideon. If I build the railroad, I'll take the northern route and leave the La Paz alone. And you're a bigger fool than I thought. Now, will you get out? I think you're the fool, and a blind one at that. Or you wouldn't let Steve Bent even walk down the same street with Vinnie Moore. Bent isn't in love with her, but he is using her. And you're letting him get away with it. You're a lying... Listen to me, Gideon. Bent has a way with women. And Vinnie isn't the first one. Who do you think is financing him right now? It's no concern of mine. Rita Molyneux. You've heard of her. She and Bent are old friends. Too bad all of us haven't got away with women, isn't it? 
So long. You know how I wasn't a little afraid of you? I'll tell you how beautiful you are. Afraid of me, Steve? Oh, everyone's afraid of Rita Molino. Fame, fortune, beauty. I know, and no heart. Oh, I didn't mean that. But you've heard it said. Who knows, maybe they're right. Is that why you've never fallen in love with me, Steve? I'll tell you the truth. Other huh? men have, really. But you... Well, this is a business proposition. Oh, business and money. You're going to have a part in building an empire. I know it's a good investment. Otherwise, I wouldn't have persuaded my friends to lend you the money. I always make a good investment. You're a strange girl, Rita. Not so strange. Steve. So that's why you didn't wait in Topeka. Except for Mars' daughter. Oh, for a minute I was scared and a little jealous. Here you figure out the smart way to eliminate your competition, and I think it's love. Well, that's just it, Rita. It is love. Oh, Steve, now if you're trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be funny. It's true. Well, at least thanks for telling me. I could have gone on being in love with you for years and years and getting nowhere. Oh, if I know you, Rita, you'll always be falling in and out of love. No. Nope. Never again. What's the matter? Say, who's that handsome brute in buckskin? Oh, that's Gideon. Gideon? I thought Gideon was an angel. Where are his wings? He uses spurs instead. Already along. Excuse me a minute. I, I've got to go down before they leave. Jack, you better shorten the tugs on your wheelers. All right. Ma'am, you all set to go? Everything's all right, kid. Fine. I wouldn't get to say goodbye to you. If you ever do come to La Paz... I'll be there in August. My birthday's on the 14th. Am I invited? You are. I'll be there. That's a promise? Already along the line! Goodbye, Steve. Build your railroad if you can, but stay out of La Paz. What's the matter? I don't understand. I think you do.
the matter? Can we go on? Well, we can and we can't. We can if we change this wheel, and we can if we don't. Why don't you men take better care of your gear? I'll pull in your horns. Get your heart on their mule. Besides, it's bad for your liver. Well, get a new wheel. Must have been something in the end. Come on, horses. Will you help me down? What's the matter, dear? Nothing. Well, you've hardly talked to me the whole trip from Pawnee. Well, I have nothing to say. I believe you're jealous of Steve. No, it isn't that. But just because Father hates Steve, you think I ought to hate him, too. But Steve's works for the good of everyone. Can't you see that you and Father and Steve are all working for the same thing? He didn't waste much time, did he? Well, here's something he didn't tell him. He started out to make a fool of just you. Just a minute. Are you sure you want to talk about Steve when he isn't here? Maybe you're right. I'll save it. Any trouble, Gideon? No, sir. Well, you're right on schedule. The train was on time. That helped. Met Miss Vinnie at the depot. Miss Vinnie? Say, what's wrong between you two? Nothing, sir. Hey, you two will have to make up for lost time. And the most exciting part of the trip was the steam cars. You've no idea how they've improved. Why, they have special places to eat and sleep, like, like parlors and dining rooms. Fancy fouled her off. At one time, we were running 25 miles an hour. Turn loose any one of my wagons, they'll go faster than that. Downhill. But we were running on the level. And it's dangerous and unnecessary to travel that fast. Why is everybody in such a hurry nowadays? They say in St. Louis that someday trains will go from New York to San Francisco in less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Who filled you with this interest in trains? Well, it's just that I've been traveling on them. Is that what you and Gideon have been quarreling about? Well, in a way. Vinny, I'm an old man. Nonsense. You're still the strongest, handsomest. And there's only one thing left in the world I care about. You. And what I've built up for you here in the territory. Someday it'll all be yours. Unless they take it away. Oh, that'd be a pretty big job, wouldn't it? Stephen Bent's going to try. Mr. Mara, I'm telling you for the last time, we've demanded a reduction in the freighting rates. Very well, I'll reduce it 10%. No, that is not enough. And get someone else to carry your freight. Oh, perhaps we do that too. Man, the railway smoke is blowing this way fast. We, oui, you bet you for sure. Mac, have I ever lost a bag of wool or a bale of hides for you? Through your nuts. Then my rates are fair for the service I give. But, man, you got a Kenny I for your own purse strings. But why not? I made you a rich man, you too, Duval. Now, why not let things go on smoothly and prosperously as they are instead of yelling railroad? But this country, she is beginning to grow. You men keep your stock on public land open to entry. If you let in the railroads, it'll bring an army of homesteaders that'll fence you out of your pastures. Plows will loosen the soil, the winds will come, and then what? Tell me that. I'm on a long way off. It is no harm to us now. You can ship the loot out outside, but I'm going to tell you if the last you're going to get, Mr. Marr, unless you reduce... Get in. Yes? 
Don't accept their freight. Very well. The Missouri Sentinel's near enough to know so we can reach the railhead. Okay. The fight's here, Gideon. I don't intend to see 34 years of work ground into dust overnight. I don't blame you, sir. I've sent for a man named Clanton. Champ Clanton? You know him? He's a railroad man. I'm aware of that. But we'll settle with him after we've used him to destroy Steve Bent. expect me to speak in front of him. But, Father, you're mistaken about Steve. He Let me say something, Penny. I owe you an apology, sir, for not making my presence known to you first, but the music was playing. I, I have eyes, Mr. Bent. I also know you weren't invited. But he was. I invited him when we were in Pawnee. Perhaps you'd be good enough to come over to my office, Mr. Bent. I'd be very happy to, sir. Choice, Bent. I told you once you were not to come around here. I told you I'd be back. I understand your attitude towards me, Mr. Marr, but I don't respect your business judgment. What do you mean by that? Well, we're both losing money on the freight that you're hauling in your wagons between Santa Fe and Kansas. You lose more than that before we're through with it. Not only that, you're sacrificing a place on the board of directors of the Missouri Central. Come on, Mr. Marr. Join us. Be a part of this era of progress. I have nothing to do with you or your railroad. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Marr, that you leave me no alternative except to petition the Federal Land Commissioners. 
to condemn my cutoff? What else can I do? I wish you hadn't done that. Gideon, Mr. Bent is leaving La Paz immediately. that way. He'd rather I kill them. Maybe I should have. How you hate Steve. That's just it. I don't hate him. I could have every reason to. He's in there. Say goodbye to him. Birthday, darling. Oh, you're good. Of course, I'm having Father did that. No. He did, I know he did. Oh, Stephen, Stephen, I'm so sure. Has Ben gone? Yes, sir. Good. Your trust in Gideon is very touching, Mr. Morgan. Where is he? I've often wondered why men were afraid of you, Father. Now I know. From now on, you'll take orders from Clanton. You're making a mistake, sir. I'm not asking for your opinion. Turn him loose and the trail will run red. You'll do as I say. You might as well settle this now, then, sir. You're pulling away from me, is that it? Yes, sir. You better go. Goodbye, sir. No, sir. Going off without me is like going off without the horse's tail. It can't be done. Oh, yes, it can. You're staying here. You wouldn't want me to take orders from that there Clanton guy. Wouldn't be proper. You might bring your friend Brannigan along. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Brannigan? No, nope, I'm going with you. Now wait, Tiny. The old man needs someone here. Well, then why are you so anxious to pull out? Remember what Bent said that day in the cutoff? I was sort of busy that day. And he said, I'd rather have you with me than against me. And that time has come. Do what you can for Vinny. When you get to Pawnee, will you send me out a bottle of that medicine for my lumbago? Gideon! He's gone, Miss Finney. Where? He said something about looking up that railroad feller. Steve.
Hi, Gid. Charlie, turn around for me, will you? Everything all right? So far. Good. We're up for our necks in trouble. Planting again? Throwing everything, from monkey wrenches to bombs. Even had the banks haul me in on the carpet. So? How'd you make out? Well, I no more than pacified the bankers when a bridge was dynamited over the plat. That'll set us back two weeks, at least. You know, get it all adds up to just one thing. What's that? Plan's bankers will stop at nothing to ruin us. I never thought that of the old Jeff. What did you say? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking out loud. and power are hard to buck, kid. And you said you wanted to build a railroad, didn't you? Yes, and we will. I got to hustle back as an important stockholder who wants to know why we need so much money. <laughs> well, keep things humming, kid. You can count on us at this end. Thanks, fella. more than Mr. Clanton is here from Topeka. Yes, sir. Come in. I'll wait out here. Yes, sir. How do you do, Miss Moore? Nice day, isn't it? You're waiting for my father. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Your man has attended to that. Then you'll excuse me. I saw your friend Stephen Bent in Pawnee. Well? Well, I hope you won't misunderstand me. But I'm a friend of your father's. And the information I have for him may interest you, too. If you have any information for my father, I suggest you give it to him personally. You see, I found out who's backing Stephen Bent. Her name is Rita Molyneux. She's quite a famous person. Mr. Marr will see you now. Excuse me. Bent certainly has a way with women, hasn't he? Miss Finney! Miss Finney! I thought you were in Pawnee with the wagon. I ain't wagon boss no more. Well, why not? Clayton give Brunning my job. Father won't stand for that. I'll go in and tell him. Oh, don't do that, Miss Finney. Something terrible's wrong, and your pa's mixed up in it, too. Well, I don't know what to do. Shh. I find a way to stop Bent, and now you won't agree. There must be some other way. There probably is. But it's not as quick or as certain. It's no use, Clanton. I won't be a party to deliberate murder. Trainee? Father That's what I've been telling you. Brunning has got your pa's wagons loaded with men and headed for the cutoff to wipe out that railroad crew. Saddle my horse. Why? Never mind. Saddle my horse. Calluses on my back, and calluses on my hips, and calluses on well, my... I warned Jim Topeka. Well, if you think this trip was for pleasure, you're wrong. Well, the point is, it's not only uncomfortable, but it's dangerous. Well, there was nothing else I could do. 
I'm under pressure, Steve. My friends want to know. You're a great gal, Rita. Tell me the truth. The going's a little rough, isn't it? Oh, old Jephthah and his crowd have resorted to everything short of murder. I really shouldn't take Jephthah in that cutoff. When I was a little girl, I used to run wild in the Louisiana swamps. And I had to look out for cottonmouths and gators. And I don't mind telling you, it's been a great help to me in my career. I see what you mean. <laughs> Something yet for breakfast? Let's go that rain, Tiny. Look. Father's wagon. Yeah, chip full of Kansas cutthroats. Just like I told you. Any minute, you got enough. Then let's get moving fast. I wouldn't trade places with Steve Ben even to get rid of my asthma. He'll get it, sure. I don't care. Oh, that's it, your part talking. You really don't mean that, Miss Vinnie. I do. Of course, it was Steve was thinking about. He's my idea of a yellow coward. It gets me to thinking about Gid. Gideon? Yeah. I sure thought a lot of him before he took up with them railroaders. Kind of bad now, though. Him up there in that cutoff, too. He's up in the cutoff. Yeah. What do I care? Listen, all your life you remember how Gid loved you. How you had a chance to save him. Only you wouldn't give it a try. You ride for La Paz. Tell Father I'm up in the cutoff. <laughs> Hello, may I present my friend, Gideon Skeen? How do you do, Mr. Skeen? Pretty good, thanks. The gang calls him Gid. Consider me in the gang, too. Welcome. Steve has told me a lot about you. Not everything, I hope. He's been under the impression that you were in love with me. Believe me, Gid, I never mix business and love. I'd be more apt to fall in love with someone like you. Look out, oh. Gid. 
Oh, I wonder if you'd show Miss Mullen how we hope to get through that cut. I'll be glad to. Well, may I help you? Thank you. And, and explain why it costs so much. All right. Pretty steep climb. I can climb, can't you? <laughs> No. You help me like this and I'll manage. You can't go back that way. Let me go! But you can't, but you might get hurt. Temper seems to run in your family, doesn't it? Men, get your horses out of the way. Get your guns and ammunition. All the way back. My daughter and Gideon are caught up there. Their lives are at stake. Will you ride with me? I'll ride with you, Jeff. Me too, Miss Yamar. Thanks. Get your horse. Come on, you Mr. Redman. Charge here and cut a short fuse. Right there. Warm, isn't it? You don't like me, do you? I don't. Because you found me here with Steve? Mr. Benton is nothing to me. Oh, then it's Gideon. No. Leave me alone. Because I know what it means to be in love. Suspicious of every other woman. Hurts inside, doesn't it? Oh, let's stop being childish and get this thing straightened out. Is it Gideon?
Let's give it to him, kid. Somebody must have tipped him off. A lot of shooting going on out there. More than likely, one of us will lose the man she loves. No, it isn't Gideon. It's Steve. You got a handkerchief? Here. Use it for me. you two together after hearing all those things. That threw off the hand. I tried to mix love and business. I should have known better. But you say you didn't love Steve. Don't be an idiot. That one in Buckskins I'm worried about. You know, Rita, I like you.
Barney. This will even things up. Come up. Ain't you ever satisfied? Tiny. How do you feel? Fine. Are you feeling all right? Well, I am and I ain't. All this fighting they do, my nerves no good. <laughs> we still want you on the board of directors of Missouri Central. Oh, I'm too old. But we need the benefit of your experience. Oh, come on, Dad. Then you can live in town and see your grandchildren once in a while. Well, I'll go on one condition. What is it? Well, could you fix it, Steve, so that I could ride on one of them big locomotives? <laughs> Just once. Ha, ha, ha.